Last week, I compared the granite talon tire levers to the wolf tooth master link pliers. And some of you agreed with my assessment on it with the granite talon tire levers being my favorite. Others didn't, but that's okay because that's what this video series is all about. Letting you see the differences between these two and decide for yourself which one is right for you. With that said, let's go ahead and let's get into this week's budget or bougie. This video is brought to you by Kuva. Kuva is a garage organization company and they make amazing bike racks for your garage. Go check them out at kuva.com or follow them on Facebook. And if you use the coupon code MIKE10, you'll get 10% off any purchase made through Kuva's website. Links below in the description. And again, thank you Kuva for being a sponsor of this video. I was in the market for a brand new shock pump and I thought, why not do this comparison? And the budget version is gonna be a Defy analog shock pump. This is a basic shock pump that you can find all over Amazon. And I wanna compare it against the bougie version, the Lazine Digital Shock Pump. In fact, they call this the Digital Shock Drive. The Lazine looks amazing when you compare it to this Defy. But will the Lazine actually be worth the high price over the Defy? Let's go ahead and let's dig into it. So this budget version is $18. It's supposedly made by a company called Defy and it will go up to 300 PSI according to its gauge. The gauge is analog and does come with a pressure release valve. These are all pretty standard things on most shock pumps. In fact, the name brand version that I had was identical to this that I used for about 10 years. Although it has a CNC'd aluminum shaft on this, just like my old one, where I can take it fully apart. Now, the one thing about this one that's kind of unique compared to some of the other shock pumps in the same price range is on the end, they do claim that it will work for Schrader or Presta valves. So you could, in theory, use this to air up bike tires or shocks or forks. So how to do that is on the tip here, whenever it's fully down inside this valve here, it is actually gonna be used for Schrader. And if you wanna do Presta valves, you just simply unscrew it. Eventually it'll get to the point where the threads are not attached and then it just kind of expands. And that will allow you to put this on a Presta valve and then whenever you thread it back down, it'll work for a standard Schrader valve, which is what you would expect on your fork or your shock. So now let's go ahead and test this out. Let's see how many pumps it takes to get to 130 PSI on my rear shock for my Marin. Once I've got this aired up to what looks to be 130 PSI on the gauge, I'm gonna test its accuracy with the Smart Gauge D2 from Topeak. I've used this on my bike tires. I trust this one. Now I know there's gonna be some inaccuracies no matter which gauge you go with, but this is gonna be our control. We're gonna go off of whatever this says as the actual pressure. So I know this probably isn't the most scientific way to actually test these gauges, but this is the direction I'm gonna go and hopefully it'll give us some idea of how accurate they are. The Defy attached to the shock perfectly, no problems with the threading of the Schrader valve. I aired this up three times. The first time I aired it up to right around 123 to 124 PSI, and then the D2 digital gauge read this right around 118. I expected it to lose a little bit of PSI, so the four or five PSI that you lose whenever you take the pump off of the actual shock is to be expected. Most of these shock pumps say that they won't lose any air, but there's always that little bit of air between the valve of the shock and the pump itself. And it doesn't take much to lose a few PSI when you're talking such a small chamber at such a high pressure. Overall, the Defy did really good. That analog gauge isn't extremely precise, but it gets you relatively close. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Lazine Digital Shock Drive. Now the Lazine, if you've ever seen their products, they're absolutely beautiful. It is a fully CNC'd aluminum body with a steel piston. So this thing's gonna be really strong, but lightweight. Along with that, it comes with a braided hose that looks amazing and won't get caught or snagged on anything. The hose does actually screw into the top of the handle, which is a really nice feature because you won't have any plastic clips that could possibly break on the body of the shock. 
Now, unlike the Defy, this is only going to be used for Schrader valves, which makes more sense whenever you're in the market for a shock pump. Having that Presta valve really was kind of a goofy add-on, but I'll give it to them. They did add something extra to it that the Lazine just doesn't have. Beyond the good looks of this, this claims that it can go all the way up to 350 PSI. Now, some of the reviews online claim that it's really hard and almost impossible to get it up to 350 PSI. Now, unfortunately, I can't test that claim because all of the equipment that I have here does not require pressure near that high. So we'll be taking this up to about 130 PSI on my rear shock for my full suspension and see how quickly it can actually get there. Now, this does have a fully digital gauge, which is one reason why I really wanted to get this particular product. I've always wanted a digital shock pump. With a digital shock pump, you should be able to get really precise, accurate numbers. Those analog gauges really kind of give you a variance of about five PSI. It's kind of hard to dial it in there. But with this digital one, you should be able to get it dialed into the exact pressure that you want. Now, just like the Defy, this does have a pressure release, so you could over inflate and then slowly deflate if you wanted to. Being that it's digital, it does require a battery. It takes a CR1220 battery, which is kind of a common watch battery that you can find at just about any store. This also does have a battery gauge on it, so you can kind of see whenever your battery's getting low and you know to pick up a new battery. It does have an auto off, which is really nice. To turn this on, they really thought this through. Instead of just hitting this button once, you actually have to hold it down for about two to three seconds then it'll actually turn on the gauge. So you don't have to worry about any accidental turn-ons whenever this is stored in a pack or in your toolbox. Now, when we compare these two pumps side by side, you can see the Lazine is so much smaller. The Defy is actually claiming you can use this as a bike pump, but I wouldn't want to carry this in my bag. It's quite a bit taller. So just so you know, the Lazine is actually eight and three quarters inches so that would make this one closer to about 13 inches. That's a big difference. The design being nice and compact really makes it appealing to carry around with you. So now that we know a little bit about the design, let's go ahead and hook it up to the Marin and see how long it takes to pump up to 130 PSI. Then check the accuracy with the Smart Gauge D2. Now on the Lazine, it of course threaded onto the shock perfectly fine, just like the Defy. This is something that I wouldn't think anybody would actually get wrong in their manufacturing, and both Defy and Lazine did a good job. The nice part about the Lazine is that you can digitally see how much pressure you've got in here. Both of my readings were pretty much the same result as what the Defy did. It got you within three to four PSI, and you lose a little bit whenever you actually remove it from the shock. Don't be surprised by this, no matter what the brand says about not losing air. This is definitely something that happens with every single pump. There's always that little bit of pressure that can escape no matter what. So the nice part about the design is that you get really precise measurements. There's not that guessing that you have with the analog gauge. Real quick, I wanna thank our next Drop-In Crew Pro member, JD. Thank you, JD, for becoming a Drop-In Crew Pro member. As you probably already know, that qualifies you for the Budget and Bougie giveaway. If you guys wanna be part of the Budget and Bougie giveaway, go over to my member section and join for as little as 99 cents a month. That will qualify you for the giveaway after the next video. So now is the deciding factor, which one am I gonna go with? Both of them are pretty accurate. Surprisingly, for $18, this Defy works really well. It's a little bit more bulky, and a little bit more old school, but it does offer that option to pump up bike tires if you wanted to carry this around with you. Where the Lazine definitely comes in to be a lot more compact, the digital gauge is super awesome, and this thing is amazing looking. All in all, both of these pumps, you really can't go wrong with them. They're awesome pumps. This one, if you wanna go budget, is definitely the way to go. If this one, you wanna go bougie, you gotta go with the Lazine. And me, personally, I'm gonna pick the Lazine as the winner. Even though both of these do about the same quality of a job, this one being digital is definitely gonna be the one that I'm gonna wanna carry around with me when I'm out on the trail, or if I'm here in the shop actually airing up any of my suspension, I can pretty much guarantee that I've got it dialed in to the right number with this. So there you go, drop-in crew. What do you think? Would you have gone with the Defy or the Lazine? We're talking $18 versus $80. I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next one.